When it comes to TV commercials, every viewer has his own list of the ones he hates the most. The kind of ad that makes people want to get up and throw something at the screen. Now, you might think that would make the advertising agency very uncomfortable coming up with a commercial that people don't like. But it's just the opposite. There are plenty of Madison Avenue types, or their Australian equivalents, who will tell you that once you've created an ad people really hate, you're on a winner. You see, table scraps and odds and ends from the butcher are not good enough. Now you can buy table scraps and odds and ends from the butchers in a tent. <laughs> when it first started, it was all so simple find a personality, and he would sell the product, provided he had a little cooperation. Come on, you may eat. Nowadays, it's a much more complicated business. Jeffrey Cousins, corporate chief of George Patterson's, only the fourth in 50 years. What Cousins and his agency say sells. What a great idea. And sells so well. It's got the flavor. But Pattersons have taken a red carpet ride to the top of their business. You gotta go, go, go for it, go for it. People like ads, you see, even the ones they hate. It's a little bit like when you're watching one of those talent programs and you love to sit there saying, isn't he awful? Isn't that guy a terrible performer? And some ads people react to like that. Some of them they actually do enjoy. In the advertising world, George Patterson's is the establishment. For the last 50 years, they've managed to convince you to part with millions of dollars for dog foods, deodorants, detergents, you name it. So if your kitchen has ever been hit by a white tornado or your clothes have been lemon charged, then you owe it all to this place. If, on the other hand, you've ever had the urge to throw a brick at your television set, then the likelihood is that your target was born right here. Hold it, loves! It's right at the end, Raina! If you don't love them, then the chances are that you love to hate them. Now tell me why an apple's like a tooth. They're both shiny and hard, but... The inimitable Mrs. Marsh has managed to sell us thousands of tubes of toothpaste, even though she's regularly topped TV viewers' lists of most hated ads. Do you think that Mrs. Marsh is a nice lady? She's a perfectly delightful lady. She's a bit like the, uh, uh, the knowledgeable schoolmistress, I suppose, who, who gives you information. Uh, knowledgeable schoolmistresses can be a bit annoying at times, but nevertheless you tend to believe what they say and you tend to act on it. Is it likely that we'll be seeing Mrs. Marsh for another 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Well, you've been seeing her for quite a while now, which means she must be very successful. It's the unsuccessful ads that disappear overnight. Success certainly hasn't spoiled this lady. What have you been doing? Mixing cement? <laughs> oh, Madge. Way this back in the beginning, ruined, George I Patterson's haven't. created Madge. I've got just the thing. You palm olive dishwashing liquid. And Madge oh, spoke the word. A softening hands. Dishwashing liquid? Sure. And Patterson oh, saw oh, that the word was good. Mild. Palm olive liquid's more than just mild. You're soaking in it. In Very good. Liquid. You don't set out to irritate people. That's certainly not the aim of the business, far from it. Uh, however, it, it sometimes happens that a very effective commercial, effective in the sense of getting the message through, may also irritate people. And if that's the case, that's tough luck. I don't know what sort of women Mr. Mr. Cousins employs down there, but I think they ought to take him out shopping. Ita Buttrose is definitely not a Patterson's and, uh, woman. You know, I mean, there are some advertisements that annoy me enough for me not to buy the product, and I think that's about the only way you can retaliate. Do you think that you've got women right in your ads? Well, in the ones that are successful, we've got them right, and in the ones that are unsuccessful, we've got them wrong. You really read the ad reader? So what makes your skin crawl like you. may be music to the ad man's ears. Ripper, reader. I know the way to a young man's heart. <laughs> Rita the Eater Eater, who a lot of people say annoys them, uh, happens to be one of the most successful commercials running on television right at the moment. What do you think of Rita? What do I think of Rita? I think Rita's a great success, and I love great successes. Patterson's rode onto our screens and trampled our sensibilities almost from the moment that television began. Remember this? There's a giant white tornado! A new one! More powerful than ever! The product is the thing that determines what the commercial is going to be about and what it's going to look like. So if it's a commercial about 
a washing powder, then it will be fairly natural that it's going to be set in a laundry and that if it's a commercial about uh, a dog food, then it may be very relevant to have an authority figure, somebody who knows about feeding dogs, saying, let me give you my knowledge on this subject. You may eat. But even authority figures have their problems. Uh, <laughs> Rover boy, this is delicious here. This is pal dog food. Uh, Rover darling. Oh, he's... Even then, it was a question of taste. What turns some people on, turns others off. How then do two nuns stealing a television set sell corn chips? Two nuns stealing a television set sell corn chips exceptionally well. That's a piece of fantasy, isn't it? It's a piece of fun. It's a, it's a product that's just a, a light-hearted, enjoyable product. And uh, that's what that commercial does. It, it positions it in that way. It doesn't say anything about corn chips, though, does it? It doesn't say anything factual about corn chips. It doesn't say that these chips are made from corn that's ripened in the sun, because, frankly, nobody wants to know about that. Is it lemon-scented? Does it have grease-cutting agents? Is it mild on your hands while you do dishes? Agencies like George Patterson's would have us believe that they're the most pressing questions facing Australian womanhood today. But it seems that the George Patterson woman isn't everybody's kind of woman. I wonder what women they know. I wonder if they... I wonder if they look at the women they work with. I wonder if they look at the women they sleep with. I wonder if they look at their daughters, their, you know, their wives or what have you. I, I don't know women like I see portrayed on television. There's a lot of noise made in the community about the image of women in ads, ads, George Patterson yep. ads, for instance. I mean, is any of the criticism justified? No, none of it's justified, really, because that kind of criticism, you're talking about stereotyping of women and so on, uh, is a pretty unintelligent thing to say. I don't think it's unintelligent to, to want women to be betrayed as we are. And, and that's women who are at home or in the workforce. I don't see either of those two women being portrayed realistically. When you make a commercial about a food product, where in God's name are you going to have the woman? If she is a lady barrister, surprisingly enough, when she comes home from work, she will still go in the laundry to wash her underwear. And she's going to look pretty much like anybody else. So. Those criticisms are really silly. Soy sauce. <laughs> oh, look, look, I hope you can get that out. Ah, hate the dynamo man with a deadly loathing. <laughs> what does he do to you when you well, say? Well, you, you know, let's picture the situation. Can you really imagine this happening? Here he comes and he tips beetroot or whatever it is he does to that poor woman's clothes and shirts and so on. And we're meant to take it seriously. We're meant to believe that we would let some some idiot come in, tip stuff all over the washing and then let him wash it. You just wouldn't do it. If we let that stain set until tomorrow, do you believe Dynamo could get that out? That's a very old-fashioned way of selling um, something to do your washing with. And, and I think the women, apart from the man being, being portrayed as, uh, as a half-wit, I think the woman is, 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 is so dumb that there's not a woman alive, I don't think, in Australia like that. But if you think the dynamo man just tumbled out of an ad man's imagination, take a close look at the Patterson plan. Every advertisement thrown into the lion's den before being approved. Ordinary housewives road testing a new campaign for baked beans. Once upon a time, put all the uh, baked on baked beans. You tell! Never want to agree, make no mistake. They were the best baked beans that ever been baked. Every move recorded secretly. Every reaction, however small, speaks volumes to the ad man hidden behind a two-way mirror. I baked my original recipe, cross my cooking spoons. Crazy oh, oh, is it? Oh, great. Southern States of America, and I object. I think I if anything, Ireland, England, and Scotland, and Australia, but we didn't come from there. That riles me in a lot of, of ads. They have American accents in it. Oh, oh. oh. 
And what's the view through the looking glass? Uh, well, we'll have to wait and see what the psychologist says about it, but from a lot of years of watching groups, uh, they didn't seem particularly interested in it. Why do we have to have this American influence? Yes, this the jingle is kind of catchy, but I say the yes, accent. Yeah. Well, look at that. Certainly seems to get a, a pretty immediate reaction, that yeah. one. Yeah. See a very marked difference in their action. The Patterson think tank goes to work. Um, and, and quite positively, and, and fortunately, um, to no detriment of communication. The communication was, was quite strong. And yet, there, there seemed to be a lot of antagonism towards the American accent and uh, that's right, towards that's right. some of the executional yes. elements in the commercial. Yes. The perfect ad so takes some doing. Well, well, Psychologists and wordsmiths uh, tussle with the creative concept. Um, you, you um, hesitate a little because of some of that reaction to the American accent, mm. um, but you certainly wouldn't can the concept. Good. Well, it seems to me to be pretty clear from that that... Uh, Never has the humble things, bean uh, suffered such scrutiny. I mean, nobody seems to be in any way interested. Maybe what we ought to be doing is looking at some alternative ways of expressing that. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yeah. The good, wholesome, done on the farm, oh. old-fashioned but fun thing is good. All of those things are good. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you obviously know what is going on. <laughs> it's just that it's going on for so long. <laughs> we, uh, one asks oneself, will he ever stop? <laughs> That's impossible. You people never say to yourselves in a creative uh, meeting, this ad is going to annoy the hell out of the audience, but it's going to work. No, we don't say that. Uh, we say it's going to work, and then if it annoys the hell out of the audience by accident, uh, that will be uh, uh, a byproduct. It won't be something that anybody sets out to do. You set out to sell? You set out to sell. That's what the business is all about, sure. They will say to me, well, the product sells. But, but the real argument, and the one they never test, the one they never braved to test, because advertisers and the advertising industry is not a brave profession. Um, how would the product go if, if they actually portrayed women as, as we are, as, as, as people with, who can think, who can express themselves, and know what they want? For the advertiser, like George Patterson, there's really only one thing that counts. Does it sell the product? That means that for as long as you keep buying the toothpaste and the margarine and the dishwashing liquid, Mrs. Marsh and Madge and Rita and all the others will keep coming back to your lounge room to haunt you. But if it all does get a bit too much for you, there is one thing you can do to get your own back.